Tonight on Speedway Landing Port Radio, presented to you by Shaler Acura of Manchester, Connecticut. My co-host, Ricky Rotundo, and myself, we'll talk to the latest winner on the Valente Modified Racing Series, driver Steve Massey. And we'll get up to speed on what's taking place on the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Nationwide, and Camping World Truck Series with Monty Dutton. Make sure you check out his blog, MontyDutton.com. And later on on Speedway Line Report Radio, we'll check in with a driver who's having a very good season on the Valente Modified Racing Series, Todd Zegedy. We'll also hear from Todd if they were able to get practice in today at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway with a wheel and modified tour practice and a car owned by Rob Fuller. And we'll take your phone calls, 203-757-1320. We're streaming live on WATR.com and SpeedwayLineReport.com, where all shows are archived. Today is Monday, June 9th, 2014, and Speedway Line Report Radio is headed your way right now. Gentlemen, start your engines! is in the air and it's time for the Speedway Line Report presented by Shaler Acura of Manchester broadcasting from our WATR studios in Waterbury, Connecticut and streaming live around the world it's 90 minutes of auto racing news now here's Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Speedway Line Report Radio Gary Danko right alongside Rocket Rick Rotundo from r, r Fabrication. He's also the crew chief on the SK Modified that Eric Burnt competes with over at the Stafford Motor Speedway. This show is also being brought to you by Embroidery Works, J.M. Montesano Auto Body, Jim's Lawn Care Service, Grotto Restaurant, and your car, your choice, the Auto Body Association of Connecticut. The phone number that you need tonight, 203-757-1320, is we're going to talk auto racing. And Ricky, tonight uh, we're going to talk uh, to Steve Massey, uh, who for the last uh, couple of seasons has been running on the Valente Modified Racing Series. He picked up the win at Seekonk Speedway uh, this past Saturday night. We'll talk to him about that and much more. Speaking of the Valente Modified Racing Series, Rick, uh, breaking news today. Uh, of course, uh, if you check it, Race Day CT out, you'll see that uh, the, uh, the racing director... Uh, has stepped down Scott Tapley, who in my opinion I thought uh, has done a great job even when he was over uh, at the Waterford Speed Bowls, the race director. He's also the race director over uh, at the Thompson Speedway. But today uh, that news coming out uh, that Scott Tapley uh, no longer uh, the Valente Modified Racing Series director. Your thoughts? Uh, it's just a shame when you, all the guys I know that were racing it liked him. And it, it, it's a shame when you have a, a split up like that when, you know, the tech guys are liked and things like that. But it happens in racing, even though you think everything's going good, sometimes it's really not behind everything else. So it's, it's tough, but, you know, it's just like everything else. They'll find a replacement and things will go forward and go from there. It's, you know, like I said, it's tough. I know a lot of the competitors and stuff did like Tapley. So, uh, you know, they'll just see where they go from there. Right, and once again, if you want to check out more on uh, Scott Tapley, uh, who was the Valente Modified Racing Series uh, director, why he has stepped down, you can go to uh, racedayct.com. Of course, Sean Corshane, um, who uh, takes care of uh, that website, does a great job. Make sure you check that out and uh, find out. Uh, you'll see uh, some quotes uh, from Scott Tapley and much more in that. Yeah, I guess, you know, it was just one of the things he didn't get along with... Uh you know, some of the higher-ups, I guess, so, you know, it is what it is, and they'll all move on from there. Right, and, you know, we got Steve Massey, who runs on the Volante Modified Racing Series, coming up in just another couple of minutes. Uh, we'll talk to him about that as well, and Todd Zegedy, uh, who uh, competes full-time now in the Volante Modified Racing Series. Uh, we'll check in with him not only on how his season is going, but we'll get his thoughts as well. We'll take our first commercial break, and when we come back, our first guest of the evening, Scott uh, excuse me, Steve Massey, he's up next.
Taylor Acker in Manchester has a long-standing commitment to quality and reliability. It's that commitment that makes buying a certified pre-owned Acura from Shaler so satisfying. Every certified Acura from Shaler goes through a 150-point inspection and comes with a 7-year or 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. Plus, save on your monthly payments with low finance rates. Nowhere else but Shaler Acura. 345 Center Street, Manchester. Call 860-647-7077 or visit them on the web at shaleracura.com. Shaler Acura, Manchester. In the market for a new Acura, there's only one place to go. Shaler Acura in Manchester. Shaler is Connecticut's first Acura dealer. Shaler offers the area's best selection of new Papers and rolling. pre owned Acuras. Yeah. Shaler yeah. Acura yeah. also yeah. offers extended hours for yeah. parts and service. <laughs> until 8 o'clock Monday through Thursday. Wow. And until 4 o'clock on Saturday. Great. Come to Shaler oh, Acura. 345 Center Street, so Manchester. Or Good visit job. them on the web Hopefully at shaleracura.com. Nowhere so else but later Shaler Acura. Accurate. <laughs> Opinions expressed on the Speedway Line Report do not necessarily reflect those of WATR management and staff, or management and staff of the Speedway Line Report.com or Vintage Modifieds.com. Welcome back to the Speedway Line Report, presented to you by Shaler Acura. Of your car, your choice, the Auto Body Association of Connecticut. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Ricky, uh, Stafford Motor Speedway, they were able to get all of their racing action in. Of course, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour was on hand. Uh, it's been a couple of tries to get that in. We're going to talk more about that a little bit later on. Uh, but the regular divisions at Stafford Motor Speedway, the SK Modified, Ryan Priest uh, for another victory. And the car that, that you uh, work on as the crew chief, Eric Burn, came home second. Yeah, we had a good car. Uh... You know, we're trying a few different things. Bob Horn is, is trying a few different things on the cars because we're fast, but we're not fast enough. And just like even Pre said after the race, he's still working on it. Everybody wants to be a little bit faster, of course. I mean, it's one of them races where we were the second fastest car and we came in second. A lot of times you, you could be the fastest car and not even come in second. You could be fifth. So it was a good day. I mean, Priest definitely the last... 10, 12 laps or whatever it was, we were getting a little bit free, and he didn't. He stayed consistent. He had a great car and just, you know, walked, us, walked from us. So, But all in all, good race for us. Good race in the SKs, I thought. It was a little bit of a show for the fans, too. When Priest got by, Eric was on his back bumper for 10 laps or so. You know, it was almost starting to mix it up. But, you know, it is, it is uh, you know, good day of racing. Can't complain about second place. Right. And Joey Cipriano, Keith Rocco, Woody Pitcat rounded out uh, the top five in the SK Modified Division. In just a couple of minutes, we're going to talk uh, to Steve Massey, who picked up the victory on the Valente Modified Racing Series uh, this past weekend. We'll talk about that. We'd like to talk to you as well. You want to talk auto racing, 203-757-1320. Also, the YouTube man, Robert Baggett, he is uh, in our Waterbury studio. Always glad to see Robert. And, of course, uh, Tom Graves uh, working uh, and pushing the buttons. Hopefully, he'll be pushing the all the right buttons tonight. <laughs> so, uh, he even says hopefully as well. 203-757-1320. We're streaming live at WATR.com. You can also catch us uh, by going to SpeedwayLineReport.com where all shows are archived. Our first guest of the evening, he's all set to go. He pulled into victory lane this past Saturday night on the Valente Modified Racing Series. Steve Massey now joins us. Steve, welcome into the show. Congratulations on the victory. Yep, I'm glad to be here. Okay, let's, uh, we'll start out the conversation with the race at Seekonk uh, this past uh, weekend. Talk about the, the victory from the time you got to the racetrack and to the time you got to victory lane. He's on the line with us, the number that you need tonight, 203-757-1320. Steve, talk a little bit about the, for uh, folks that maybe have never gone to Seekonk Speedway. How would you describe it uh, from behind the wheel of your machine? Um, I actually like Seekonk Speedway. Uh, 
talk a lot, and uh, when I talk to people about the car, they usually refer to it as like a small, dinky, little country truck, and I'm always defending it. I love sea You know, it's two by two races. For most of the race, uh, you can pass it inside, outside, and um, it's awesome to watch a race. You can see all the moves happen on the racetrack, and um, I think that facility. Hey, Steve, I'm getting a note here. I guess uh, you're traveling uh, in your truck. A uh, little problem. Uh, I don't know if it's in the cell area that you are in. Um, I don't know if there's a place maybe you can pull over, but uh, the, the signal not that well. I don't know. Can you hear us pretty clear? Yeah, um, I'm actually almost, I'm almost done driving. I'm just hit the Walmart. i got to buy a couple things. So, uh, you know, just, I'm, I'm almost at Walmart. I'll be there in probably about two, two or three minutes. Um, if it's still a little thingy, you know, hopefully I'll get out of the truck and be better then. Okay, what we'll do is uh, we'll wait till he gets uh, in a better location, Rick, and then uh, uh, we'll give him a call back in, in just a couple of minutes. Don't forget, also coming up tonight, we're going to talk to Monty Dutton. Make sure you check out his latest blog at montydutton.com. And later on in the show, Todd Zegedy, who runs full-time on the Volante Modified Racing Series, uh, he's also going to compete in um, some races on the NASCAR Wheeling Modified Tour, Ricky, uh, for Rob Fuller. And today... Um, Todd was going to be up at uh, New Hampshire Motor Speedway where they had an open practice for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Yeah, that's one of the biggest tracks we go to with the tour and, you know, it's the you know, NASCAR track and everything else to where the cup cars race on it. I mean, Bristol would, would be the other one. But Loudon is definitely our, that's like our Daytona is Loudon when we go there. So, and Todd has a good record at Loudon. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm sure that he had very good feedback to give Fuller. And Fuller, you know, he said he was very adapt to the car. And, you know, it's one of the things that you, you're a better crew chief when you have driven before. And I, I'm positive of that because I drove for a very, 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 very short, short period of time. And the amount I learned in that time that I drove helped me working on the cars because you understand what the people are saying better you, you can help dial it in better and stuff like that. So it's it's one of the things I, th I think it could be a very good combination, having those two together. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, um, Todd has always run very, very well uh, at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And, of course, Todd is uh, the 2003 NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour champion. He's had a lot of success on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Of course, uh, the team that he had been driving for for, for many seasons, uh, Mike Smeriglio, uh, they went in a different direction for the 2014 season. And, of course, Doug Colby, now the driver of that race car. And, of course, Doug, uh, the latest winner on the NASCAR Wheeler Modified Tour, uh, he picked up the victory this past Friday night. More on that a little bit later on. So in just a couple of minutes, we're going to get back up with Steve Massey, who uh, has done very well for himself on the Volante Modified Racing Series in his number 13 race car. So looking forward to uh, getting getting back to him and uh, finding out uh, more on how his season is going. The phone number that you need tonight, 203-757-1320. We talk auto racing every Monday night here on WATR 1320 AM. We're also streaming online at WATR.com, and all shows are archived by going to SpeedwayLarmyPort.com. Former modified driver uh, Tom Ormsby, the webmaster of Speedway Larmy Port. Uh, Ricky, you ever have any uh, ambition, maybe someday, to get back into a race car? Not even close. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> no, I, it was one of them things. It's it just I never drove anything prior to it, and I just wanted to try it to see how it was. There's a lot of people in my family did race. Mm -hmm. Even my father, you know, raced. So okay. it was just one of the things I wanted to get behind the wheel and actually drive the car and stuff like that. And I actually, you know, it was one of the things where you actually did learn things about the car being the driver so <clears throat> I'm glad I did it and I'm not a driver never said I was and, and but it's one of the things I'm not a natural wasn't natural right. at it didn't have the feel for it like some of these guys you get put them in the car and then put right to the front it's amazing uh, and that obviously wasn't me but I I didn't cause wrecks I did, wasn't in the way of the people you know I, I stayed out of the way I kept my position and things like that. I was trying to be smart about everything. And uh, it was just, you know, a great experience that I had for myself. Right. So, um, Tom Graves, uh, working to get uh, Steve Massey back on the line with us. Uh, 
he was uh, going to get into a, a better position. I guess he was pulling into Walmart. So, well, can't wait to get back to him and find out more about uh, his victory this past weekend uh, at the Seekonk Speedway. And speaking of uh, the Volante Modified Racing Series, our boy Billy Baracoliccio, of course, he's the crew chief for Todd Zegedy, um, one of our guests coming up a little bit later on. Yep. Well, so if, if Bear ever comes back to the show, we'll have some Bear facts again. Well, I... I when I was coming home from Pocono yesterday, he uh, actually gave me a call, and there was a possibility that uh, Billy Bear uh, may be back here in our Waterbury studio, just a possibility. Uh, he would let me know uh, probably by the end of this week. I believe we're all set uh, back uh, with our guest, Steve Massey, who drives the number 13 car, put that car into the winner's circle this past weekend. Steve, getting back uh, once again, uh, your, your victory this past weekend. Uh, what was the racetrack like? Uh, did the racetrack change at all from the time you went out from practice to your qualifying heats to the feature? Uh, we thought there, there was like no rubber on the track. I guess they ran some other cars there Friday night, and there was like no rubber on the track at all. And so like I had a flat break for a tire going out there. But then after after I go to practice with the modified, and enough rubber, uh, sorry, enough rubber laid down on the track, and it uh. And I'm sure by now that uh, you know uh, running on the Volante Modified Racing Series, of course, uh, breaking news today uh, that uh, I believe it was first on race day CT, of course, uh, Sean Corshane, uh the webmaster of uh, that site, uh, that Scott Tapley, who was uh, the Volante Modified Racing Series director, has stepped down. Your thoughts on that? It's very interesting. Um, I haven't even got a chance to read the article yet. i just seen it. Um, and I don't really know what they're going to do. Scott did a pretty good job. Um, obviously, uh, he was in the middle of the tire gate thing last year. Um, you know, but that was last year. And it seemed like, you know, he, he built the website. He was managing all the social media and uh, sites and everything like that. And um, as far as I can see, he was trying to be as fair as possible to everybody. So it's uh, somewhat concerning, but um, um, you know it, it. It just is what it is. Now, since you've been on uh, the Volante Modified Racing Series, how many race directors have they gone through? Uh, we, that's a good question. Um, I can think of three, four on my head. So it's probably it's probably right around there. Maybe maybe five. Owen. Um, Couple people that did it for just a race or two. Uh, it's it's a tough position to fill. It's not a tough position, and um, anybody who does it, you know, they can put a lot of time and effort into it. And uh, with the the car that you drive on the MRS series, what type of a chassis is it? It's a Troyer, but um, it's redone at uh, at Northeast, so so it's kind of modified a little bit. And uh, whose motor do you run? Uh, Billy the Kid, before I mentioned, it's a uh, great team. I know it's Pico on Speedway, but we were getting off the corner better than anybody else uh, on Saturday. That was probably one of the reasons we won. And what are some of the sponsors you have on your car to help you out? Um, LG Products, Restaurant and Car Supplies, uh, SK Rodin, Aeroflex, Boom. Um, but the big one is definitely LG uh, Restaurant and Bar Supply. That's, uh, that's my favorite company. And they've been uh, helping me race since I was a little kid, since I was about eight years old. And, um, they're still supporting me to do it, so I, I, I wouldn't be here without them. Talking with uh, Steve Massey, uh, the latest winner on the Volante Modified Racing Series. Steve, uh, are you surprised so far? Five races, five different winners. Your thoughts? Um, no, it's a very competitive series. Um, I think one of the reasons that you see so many different winners is that you don't have the same car starting up front every race. You got a different, a different lineup, and you get different competitors at each track. You know, you got some people that are race the Connecticut tracks, uh, like Waterford, Thompson, and Stafford, and then you got some people that race, you know, all the races. So when you go to Waterford, Thompson, or Stafford, you know you're competing against Teddy and Pete, Rocco, and, uh, you know, Brian Priest and all those guys, and then when you go to the you know, but they were showing for the racers. So, um, yeah, it changes. Steve 
Massey on the line with us, 203-757-1320. If you want to talk auto racing tonight with us here on Speedway Line Report Radio, I'm Gary Danko right alongside Rocket Rick Rotundo, who is the crew chief for Eric Burnt and on the SK Modified that runs over at Stafford Motor Speedway. Back on uh, with Steve. Uh, Steve, talk a little bit about uh, the way your season has been going from race number one. Um, and, of course, uh, race number five, you uh, put your car in victory lane. Were you happy with the first four races? Yes, I mean, I, it, you're really only happy if you win. But um, I got a third, I got a fourth, which are, I was happy with those finishes. Uh, then it got the water for the opening race. We got in, we slipped in some oil and we hit the wall. And then uh, at Thompson, you know, it's just, you go to Thompson and the, the rule package for the motors just aren't, are fair and they're not really, uh, I mean, they're trying to, to close the gap for Thompson. You know, they gave us 25 pounds off the car and um, some gear to the mo to the car, but I don't think it's going to do anything. And I uh, just, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not a motor builder, but um, just the, the rules right now in place right now is just completely unfair. And I, I can see it on the racetrack and nothing to be done about it, which is, it's one of the reasons why I'm probably not, I'm not going to Stafford in a couple of weeks, just because I know they're doing Stafford. Bridge against Ryan, uh, Keith and Teddy, uh, they have all fresh motors in that are only good for one race, and um, I just don't stand a chance at winning, so there's no point in showing up. And are you too far behind in the points? Uh, did you miss a race already this year? No, actually, I, uh, that's actually, I'm not... <laughs> Or if you have to decrease for that one. 
So I think it's almost like a little brain there that I, I wrote a blog for instead of staff for a couple of weeks. Well, Steve, once again, congratulations on your victory uh, this past weekend. Another uh, win for you and your race team. Job well done, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, catching up with you down the road here. You're welcome. That is Steve Massey joining us tonight on this edition of Speedway Lounge Port Radio. Once again, uh, he picks up the win uh, at Seekong Speedway um, over the weekend. And, you know, uh, we, we've had him on before, uh, Ricky, and... Uh, when he's uh, got his machine to victory lane. Certainly a, a, a good driver, good race team, and, um, you know, uh, knows how to get the job done, no question. Yeah, um, unfortunately a couple times a little controversy followed him, not that any of it was his fault, like when he won the race at Thompson, but they took the race away, and, you know, it's, it's unfortunate when you got a good driver like that, and it, it seems like he's doing all the right things, it seems, but he's not catching the breaks that most of the other guys catch. And then the fact that he needed a break at, you know, it's like that race at Thompson that they took away from him. They were looking for an excuse to take the race right. away from him. You could tell me all day long that, you know, I know for sure that they were just looking for a reason and they thought they had one and they used it. You know, and it was a tough break for the kids. They didn't want to bring that up when he was on the air, but, you know, it is what it is. Right. And, of course, we touched a little bit uh, with Scott Tapley stepping down as a, uh, uh, the Volante Modified Racing Series uh, director, that coming out today. Uh, you can also uh, check out uh, everything by going to uh, uh, Race Day CT, and uh, you can catch up on all of the uh, information in regards to Scott Tapley stepping down as the series director for the Volante Modified Racing Series. And you can also go there for some other uh, great uh, racing news, especially pertaining to uh, short track racing. And just uh, in a couple of minutes, our next guest, Monty Dutton. Make sure you check out his blog at MontyDutton.com. Uh, Monty's going to uh, join us. We're going to talk to him about uh, his uh, take on what's going on in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, um, the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and, of course, uh, the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series as well. So, uh, And Todd Zegedy is going to join us a little bit later on. I wonder if they got that uh, open practice for the NASCAR Wheeling Modified Tour uh, today at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Don't know what the weather was up there. Certainly uh, very rainy here in Connecticut all day, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, you'll have to stay tuned uh, when we talk to Todd Zegedy. That coming up a little bit after 7 o'clock. I'm Danko. We have Rotundo, Graves, Baggett uh, is here. Of course, uh, Tom Wormsby down in Lacanto, Florida, uh, the webmaster of SpeedwayLineReport.com. Uh, you can also go there for uh, some racing information news as well. We'll take a commercial break. When we come back, we'll be all set to talk to Monty Dye. Nowhere else but Shaler Acura in Manchester. Visit Connecticut's first Acura dealer and find out why Shaler Acura is the same. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, I got a water for you there, too, you know. Yeah, I'm on my back. And you don't want a chair. Yeah, I'm fine. 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 I'm
Call Embroidery Works at 860-747-9802. That's 860-747-9802. Now at 333 East Street in Plainville. That's 333 East Street, Plainville, for Embroidery Works. Visit them online at embroideryworkct.com. Welcome back to the Speedway Line Report, presented to you by Shaler Acura of Matt. Your car, your choice, the Auto Body Association of Connecticut. Welcome back, everyone. The show is also being brought to you by Jim's Lawn Service. When it comes to maintenance and lawn care, Ricky, who do you need? There's only one person, and that's the Wild Man Jim. Wild Man Jim. I know he stops by your uh, shop. I'm sure he pulls in there with his trailer with all of his uh, fine-tuned equipment. Um, and uh, he's got quite a few accounts. I mean, he takes care of... Uh, you know, uh, my home and uh, does a great job. And if you need someone to take care of your lawn, and when it comes to maintenance, lawn care, and everything that goes along with it, I suggest Jim's Lawn Care Service out of Cheshire, Connecticut, not too far from your shop, Ricky. Lucky you, because Jim stops in to see you, which is always great. He's a big fan of, of auto racing, and of course, he's a uh, big fan of Waterford Speed Bowl. And, you know, he's like the mayor, I understand, when he walks through the pit area. Uh, over at the Waterford Speed Bowl because he does know many of the race teams. And um, a lot of uh, the teams love talking with him. He loves talking auto racing. But uh, once again, when it comes to maintenance and lawn care, all kidding aside, Jim's Lawn Care Service out of Cheshire, Connecticut, certainly knows how to get the job done. Give him a call, 203-272-2054 for Jim's Lawn Care Service out of Cheshire. Now our next guest, he's all set and ready to go. Make sure you check out his blog at MontyDutton.com. Monty Dutton now joins us. Monty, how are you tonight? I'm fine. All right. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear you as well. Um, let's talk. We'll start out the conversation. Let's talk Pocono. Dale Earnhardt Jr. picks up his second victory of the 2014 season. Uh, looked like Brad Keselowski was on his way to a victory, but it was uh, not meant to be. What's your thoughts on that race at Pocono for the Cup Series? Well, it was certainly a very interesting race and a very interesting ending. I mean, um, so easy to second guess. Keselowski, you know, it's kind of like everybody watching on TV could tell there's that something on the front grill, and you know that's going to cause the car to overheat. And so he uh, felt like he was about to blow, so he had to get it off, and so he tried to uh, do a little breeze pass down to Patrick, and he slowed down and allowed Earnhardt to take the lead. And he didn't get the debris off. Of course, since he did finish the race second, it leaves you to think, well, the engine would have made it. But that's, a, that's easy for you to say in, in hindsight. So it was a tough loss for Keselowski, but it was a good win for Earnhardt. And there have been some races, and even one this year, where Earnhardt had it won. And so it's kind of like a... Kind of, kind of like it all evens out in the long run, and so another thing is, is that I think that uh, that uh, it's a really good example of a race that, thanks to the ending of it, it was a very memorable ending. I think that that Pocono is a track that requires you to pay attention, and the people who who talk about, you know, who say that, you know, it's a, uh, I have to, I, I'm absolutely positive that if anyone other than Earnhardt Jr. had won that race, there'd be a lot of people talking that it was a dull race. But when Earnhardt Jr. wins, nobody complains. And I always, I've always thought that Pocono is a place that is a difficult track. It's a great test of driving ability. You have to be a good driver to win there. So I think that, uh, I think that, I think that uh, one of the reasons that people complain more today and I don't think they really watch the race. They're, they're, they're multitasking so much. They're tweeting. They're looking at the, the – uh, they're listening to uh, – I think you can have too much information to enjoy a race. When I watch a race, I just watch it on TV. And uh, I think I think because it's the same with, with the baseball game, same with a lot of things. People uh, don't have the attention span, but one of the reasons is, is they don't really pay attention to what's going on sometimes. Monty, with Dale Earnhardt picking up his second victory for 2014, of course, Jimmy Johnson back-to-back uh, -back wins, um, and, of course, Jeff Gordon now has a win. Casey Kane in the win column, zero. What's the thoughts, uh, your thoughts, uh, Casey Kane? Is he on the hot seat over there? Well, I think that 
But the way the Hendrick Motorsports usually operates is that if he's on the hot seat, it'll probably be nice and tidy. They'll farm him off somewhere else. <laughs> but besides that, I don't think so. Everyone who, a lot of people who've known, have sat near me on press row, one of my little slogans for years now has been, nothing ever works for Casey Kane. Once upon a time, he was, a, you know, on stardom. Uh, he basically had the misfortune of uh, driving for Ray Everham when when Ray, uh, you know, sort of I don't know, uh, started working his way out of the out of the team owner business, and uh, Red Bull came apart under him. I mean, uh, Casey Kane is an extraordinarily talented driver. And it's just like there are always people in every generation that sort of fall through the cracks. And so I would really like to see uh, things come together because it seems like to me that for 10 years now, we've been waiting for Casey Kane to, to have, that, uh, have that monster season that his talents would seem to merit. Well, I, one of the things is, I mean, I know Carl Edwards, he's a Ford guy and everything else, but doesn't his contract end this year? Yes, but I think that I think that the um, the betting line is more likely that Edwards would go to um, to the Gibbs team. I think it looks like. I mean, the way things are are unfolding, it appears that Carl is. It appears that Roush. That, 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 I mean, I, I don't know if it's true, but it, it seems like it's sort of it's getting to be a foregone conclusion that Carl is going somewhere. This past weekend. Roger Penske has said that he, there's some speculation has been there, that he that he will not be in that in signing Edwards. So in a, in a, it's, I think in a way, to me, it's kind of a shame because one thing to Edwards' credit, you don't actually see that many drivers in this day and age talk that much about their manufacturer. You don't hear them to say Chevy's the best car on the road. Edwards has always been a big booster and it's taken seriously the role of being a spokesman for Ford and to encourage people to drive Fords. And so I think that it would be a shame, to me, in my mind, I always, I always, I always sort of hate it when guys, you know, you know, Pontiac fans once loved Rusty Wallace, and, and Bill Elliott drove for Fords for a long time, but he won, had his, his last wins with, with, with Dodge. And even if you go way back, the guy who, uh, what, Dale Jarrett was a Ford guy for a while, but if you go way back to the 60s, Fred Lorenzen was Mr. Ford. But yet after he retired and came back, he drove, you know, a lot of other kinds of money. So I would love, as a, from a selfish point of view, for Carl Edwards to spend his whole career driving Ford. But that's sort of a bygone age, and it looks like, uh, it looks like that Greg Biffle is going to remain, who's also contract. Is, is uh, looks like that Greg Biffle's going to remain at Roush and that Edwards is going to move on and that Trevor Bain and Ricky Stenhouse are, are going to join Biffle in three Roush cars next year. The way things are unfolding, there have been contracts signed, nothing's finalized, but that's, that looks like the way it's evolving. And that's just like with Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart's always been a Chevy guy. And then when uh, Gibbs was switching over to the Toyota, he opted out of last year's contract, bought off whatever he had to do to make sure he got out because he wanted to stay with the Chevy. Tony had to eat a lot of crow during that time he was driving a Toyota because he had been he had been adamant about it. it didn't look. Uh, Tony was also, by the way, just for the purpose of trivia, the last driver to win a championship in a Pontiac. So Edward, uh, so so Stewart has won his three championship once in a Pontiac. And two in Chevys, but he's back in the Chevy fold now. But yeah, I think. But I think actually, uh, I think Tony looked looked a little bad when he was driving his Toyota because he would sort of uh, made some pronouncements that you'd never see him in a Toyota. So the team changed, and he was there for a while. But it may have been one of the reasons he eventually moved on. Yeah, because I heard from some people that were down there that that was he was not happy at all driving the Toyota and he just he wanted to opt out whatever he had to do to try to get out of the deal just because of that thing just like you know they say Dale Jr. he's gonna Dale Jr. is gonna probably be in a Chevy his whole career I would assume. Well his father drove Fords for a while and didn't get much support from the factory 
uh, when he drove, to, I think, two years for Bud Moore in, in the early 80s, and Earnhardt Sr. vowed he would never drive anything, but it's certainly not a Ford and never, and not, ne never drove anything but a Chevy again. But uh, at some time, most drivers move to something else, try something at one time or another, but... But I actually think, that, as I said, I think I think Toyota was very uncomfortable for Stewart. We're talking with uh, Monty Dutton. Make sure you check out his blog at MontyDutton.com. The phone number that you need tonight, 203-757-1320. Earlier tonight, we heard from Steve Massey, the latest winner on the Valente Modified Racing Series. Coming up a little bit later on, Todd Zegedy, who's been running very strong on the Valente Modified Racing Series. Uh, we'll talk to Todd about... Uh, you know, the races, the five races so far in 2014 on the Volante Modified Racing Series. And he's also got a chance to uh, run uh, some races for Rob Fuller on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. They were testing uh, today at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour open practice. We'll check with Todd to see if they got that in. And uh, his thoughts about uh, being able to run on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour in a couple of races. Back on with Monty Dutton. Monty, uh, kind of skipping around here uh, a little bit, uh, but uh, getting back uh, with uh, Carl Edwards. And you know Carl very well. Can you tell just when he does some interviews, he's a very prof he's professional from the word go, that, um, that there's something up his sleeve? Well, I think, you know, this is uh, a few years ago. There's a similar situation. And there was, it was also considered a foregone conclusion in some quarters that Edwards would leave Rouse then. He didn't. And now we're down the road as time's flown and, and he's in that situation again. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't really know. I do know, I do think that Carl is a forthright guy. The fact of the matter is, is that I think that the last time that he was ne negotiating a contract, I think he was sort of, I think he was sort of wounded by the fact that he felt like uh, no matter what he said, people didn't believe him. They were going to think what they wanted to, because he kept saying it wasn't a done deal, and people were saying, well, he's moving elsewhere, and he didn't move elsewhere. And so I do think, I think that Edwards puts a lot, I do think he's one of the guys who, you know, puts a, put, takes a lot of pride in his integrity. And I think that most of what you hear doesn't come for him, and I suspect that's because uh, of the way last time went, where he, I think he basically is just kind of saying, uh, last time I talked about it freely, and nobody believed me, and I got burned. So I think now, you know, it's just sort of like uh, I'm trying to do my best with the car, and I'm just kind of like not engaging. So I think that's, I think given the past, I think that's understandable. Monty, in your thoughts, okay, let's go uh, Penske Racing, of course, driver Brad Kazowski, Joey Logano, they're in Fords. Uh, of course, Roush Fenway, they do run Fords as well. What do you think the difference is between uh, those two teams? Well, all those things have an ebb and flow. <clears throat> I think one of the differences between those two teams is that the Roush program, in my estimation, They've got, you know, they, they've, uh, I, I think they're working really hard, but I think that the captain is always, you know, he, he, he won a championship with a Dodge, which when you think about it, when you think about 2011 and 2012, one year, Stewart wins the most amazing championship I've ever seen. And the following year, you know, Keselowski wins it when, when Dodge is almost a footnote in the series. And I think that when Penske did that well with Dodge, you should have figured that it wasn't going to hurt to move to Fords because there's, you know. Uh, so I think part of it is that Penske has got two really fine drivers. And I think that that wasn't always the case. I think that, that Joey Logano has made the transition between just being supremely talented and reaching the point where he has matured personally and also has become much better at being able to analyze what he needs in the car. And I think that, that, that Keselowski has helped him in that regard. So I think part of the reason Penske's strong is that 
that Roger Penske always does what it takes to win. But part of it is that one of the things he does is that he has that he puts a lot of care into his driver lineup. And so I think I think I think that's a real strength. And it's not as much of a strength. Well, Edwards is a fine driver and Biffle is a good is a really good driver. Sure. Biffle is getting old and Stenhouse is in the development stage and it's questionable whether he's really going to develop. So I think that the t- combination of all those factors makes a small advantage into a large advantage for for, uh, for Pensy. But I mean, by the way, in the history of racing, with some exceptions in NASCAR, when has Roger Penske ever fielded a team that wasn't a that, w- that wasn't a you know a, a, a step ahead of its competitors? I mean, no, exactly. You're, you hit the nail right on the head, Monty. NASCAR more than any other area of racing, but no Roger Penske team has ever gone wanting in anything. Let's uh, a couple minutes left with uh, Monty Dunn. Let's talk uh, Kyle Larson. This uh, young driver is certainly impressive. It doesn't matter if it's the Nationwide Series or the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Monty. I think that Larson, I don't think that, I've said this all along, early this spring when everybody was saying, uh, you might be win a race and not make the pay, to chase. There might be 17 winners. I never bought that. I think the odds are now we're in a pattern where we've gone from 10, I mean, we're, now there's now there's four people with two two race wins, and so I don't think there's going to be many more uh, new winners. And I think if I was going to be a bet on, on who it would be, I think Larson might, might do it. And... Uh, so, he's, he, by the way, he's, he's, his teammates want to race. Uh, they use Hendrick engines, which seems superior. And he's, you know, he's had two top five finishes. He had second place finish. So, <clears throat> I can see, I actually think Michigan might be a breakthrough for Larson this weekend. And I expect that he's probably, my guess is it's probably his first place that he's going to win is going to be an intermediate track. And so, uh, so I think that could happen. I think a couple of drivers that still got a chance to win that I think that are going to get a win, I should say. Kenseth, Stewart, and I think Hamlin's got a shot. Yeah, Hamlin's already got a victory. Hamlin did? Yes. Yep. Already uh, won. Matter of fact, uh, got it written down there somewhere. Yeah, but he's already uh, rolled in the victory lane. I didn't even know that. Yes, he did. Yep. Uh, I love being an idiot. That's okay. That, that, no, things happen. Uh, Kenseth is very likely to win. I mean, you know, I mean, Kenseth won more races than anyone last year, and he's not, he's not, he's sort of, I'll tell you what, Kenseth is sort of in the same boat that Edwards is in. Edwards also has a win. But, you know, I think both of them get the most out of it, but, but they're, they're for, for the, to the season at this point, in most instances, they've been running for fifth instead of running for first. For first long enough, you're going to break through. But, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that there's just a little, a little performance edge that's not there, and it's. I still think it'll be there. I think Kansas will win and may win twice between now and the end of it. But whatever. Uh, I, I don't think. But I, but I mean, you know, this is the point. You know, the reason that they don't keep having new winners is this is the point of the season where where the where where the the lines are set. I mean, when you get to this point of the season. And you're not running all that well. It, you, first of all, you get desperate, and secondly, I mean, you, you, I'm just sometimes there's uh, there's a lot of people who, who talk about how they're going to win, but it's more like the best thing they can do is finish fifth. And so I think that that one of the reasons that you don't at some point do it is because some teams just have a little bit of a performance edge, and some people can win, but the odds aren't quite as likely because they're just a little off. Monty, uh, a little off, for instance. Rick, any other questions for Monty? Uh, no, but he is right. The Childress has been off pretty much uh, for a while now. It hasn't just been this year. They were they were okay last year, but uh, since Harvick left and things like that, I think Harvick was really a big part of that. Yeah, let's let's talk about Kevin Harvick. I mean, over at Stuart Haas Racing, I mean that team certainly. Uh, the dominant car over there in those stables, and 
I'll tell you, um, no luck at all for Kevin Harvick. Well, Harvick is, um, Harvick kind of is the guy at Stuart Haas with the whole package. Uh, Kurt Busch is fast at times, but he's really had, you know, rough time. Nasha Patrick's off. Tony, the, the, Tony showed signs of awakening. Tony, Tony looks like he's, you know, on the verge of getting there. But, I mean, without question, the only car at Stuart Haas that's fast every week is Harvick. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, let's go back to yesterday's race. You know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Tony Stewart had a good, strong race car, was up front all day till he got that uh, speeding on uh, pit road, but uh, certainly worked his way back up. I believe he uh, finished uh, either 12th or 13th, but still um, some signs of uh, some... During the race. Right. Difference, but you know what? Well, for instance, a good bit of this season... Tony Stewart has been sneaking in the top ten, top five by playing it smart. Yesterday he should have been in the top five, and he made a mistake, a big mistake, and it cost him. But I mean, there's a the, the Harvick has been in the top five, sneaking into a win. <laughs> you know, Kurt Busch had one win, but he hadn't. But but Kurt Busch has spent a good bit of season screaming at his pit crew on the radio during the races. So uh, I think Stewart's getting there. And I think I think Harvick's been there all year. He's already, he's won twice. He probably could have won five races. And so uh, Harvick has done. I think Harvick. Uh, when, at, at Richard Childress, Jeff Burton got so much credit for keeping that being such a great force for that team. But I really think you've got to give Harvick a lot for being. You know, uh, I mean, it, it, Harvick having moved to, to Stuart Haas and doing what he's done makes him. Uh, you have to give him a lot of credit for. Yeah, you, you know, it looks like the difference in the team is him. Right. I wanted to talk to uh, some NASCAR Nationwide Series with you, Monty, and some uh, Camping World Truck Series, but we got about three minutes. My last question for you. Um, we know, uh, of course, NBC will be a part uh, of the broadcast team uh, coming up in uh, 2015. We know who's in the booth, Rick Allen, uh, Jeff Burton, Steve Letarte. Have you heard of anybody uh, on your end who will be on uh, pit road? Well, I just think it depends on what the contracts say. I think that the people, I think that, that you know, you have to, what, what, is, uh, what, is ABC, what is ABC, ESPN going to do with the people they have on retainer? I mean, uh, Jerry Punch does a little football. Alan Bestwick even did some football last year. But most of those people, they're not going to have as much use for. So I would think that something would be arranged. There's not, you know, but I mean, it's really kind of a crazy quilt when you look at television because, like, some people are rigidly linked. Like, for instance, Darrell Walsh. On the other hand, Larry McReynolds pops up on every network. Exactly. I think that, you know... I'm sure that we'll hear a lot more. So I have to tell you that I watch the races and all that, but, I mean, that's just one of those things where I, I'm, I'm a whole lot more interested in race drivers and race teams than I am in broadcasting. And in a sense, I sort of like my independent status because I can write about what I want to. And so I know who I like. I really like, I mean, a lot of people get upset, but I really like Kyle Petty. And I really, I, I think that he's, and he's got a certain honesty, whether you agree with him or not, just lacking in the booth. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm sort of, I, I kind of like when they switch. I think that there's a lot of things that are frustrating about TNT, but I actually think that there's a good rapport in the booth, particularly between Chow and Wally Dallenbach. And so I would love to see them, but I'm not talking about what I know. I'm talking about what I'd like to see. Well, Monty, thanks for spending some time with us on this edition of Speedway Learning Port Radio. It's always great talking uh, with you, and we'll look forward to having you on uh, next month right here on Speedway Learning Port Radio. Thank you. Monty Dutton joining us on this edition of Speedway Learning Port Radio. This show is also being brought to you by J.M. Montesano Auto Body Works, Specialist in Auto Collision, all work guaranteed, located at 390 Lombard Street in New Haven, Connecticut. Give them a call today at 203 865-1389.
for J.M. Monosano Auto Body. Once again, specialists in auto collision and Ricky, all of their work is guaranteed. National news is uh, coming up in just about 15 seconds. And then when we come back uh, from national news, we're going to talk to Todd Zegany about uh, his season on the Volante Modified Racing Series. Five races in. Is he happy? We'll find out. Of course, our good friend, Billy Bear Coliccio, the crew chief on that number 85 car, the Kevin Stewart Motorsports entry that Todd Zegedy uh, drives for. So we'll get uh, Todd's thoughts on that and much, much more. National News is next. A radio station for news, talk, and entertainment. 1320 AM WHR Waterbury. Car and ended up on the roofs of some houses in the San Fernando Valley holding an assault Great. rifle. He barricaded yeah. himself inside yeah. of those homes and a few hours later... Caledega. Caledega. Right. I couldn't watch Caledega. I was watching my line where I could yeah, and I couldn't tell what it was. Yeah, Caledega. I just looked now. It was, that's how I didn't watch any Caledega. That's why I didn't even, I didn't even remember him winning. Uh, yeah, I knew he had won. I thought he won one of the Pocono races, it was, what I thought. It was Gordon that won Charlotte, because where, where I drew my line across, that's why, I, well, he kept going, he kept talking anyways. Um, but, uh, but I knew he had won, because I marked it all the time. I forgot. Yes, Mr. Baggett. You got it down? Yeah. Um, that, uh... <laughs> I'm going to find out exactly why Pat was left, but I'm not going to be able to find out why it was Oh, your sources? Well, according to what I read, and there again, I didn't I was talking about the real thing. They talked to him just an hour and a half ago. Who did? Somebody I know. Oh, how do you know that? Because they texted me while I was on the We were on air. Here's a call you after the show to let you know what happened. Well, there again, I think some things have been building up, not only this year, I think, you know, let's go back to, to last year, um, you know, but that's why I, I just send to the people in the direction, if I had Scott Tapley on, then I would have got, you know, more into it, but that's why I send it, you know, Sean's right up to speed on everything, so if they go uh, to race day. One thing about Penske, they were talking, uh, he was talking about Penske. I got to give them guys big props. Mm -hmm. They're qualifying this year. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. They're ahead of everybody on qualifying. It's not even close. Those two cars all the time are in the, the final, especially with Lagano. And that knockout qualifying at <coughs> Ow. Ow. Or before, remember how long he said they before Pocono? Yeah. 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 A profile of weekly predictability is born, so we're making it easy for you to be comfortable. <coughs> What did you think of the action, Mr. Baggett, at the Stafford Motor Speedway Friday night? Of course, I was not there to see it. I was at Pocono, but uh, after you got all the video, your thoughts? You know, it was strange. In, in the uh, SK race, there was like two groups of two cars, and then there'd be a big space, and then two cars, and then... I never seen it like that before. Yeah, like, like I said, it was one of the things. Is Priest was the fastest car, and we were second fastest, and we won two. And then uh, Cipriano was third fastest, yeah. and right behind him was Rob, who couldn't do nothing with him. Yeah, and, you had, and everybody was like, there's a big space between the other yeah. two on each other. Did you watch the tour race? Yeah. I still say, I'm, I'm not a huge fan yeah, of Bond Senior, but I'm being just, as a racer, he got screwed. Yeah. He should have started third. I'm not saying he definitely would have won the race, but they took the chance for him to win the race away from him. And then what they were holding that race up for, Tom. the guys when Hirschman oh, was gone. Tate. You heard I, I didn't like stop it. Oh, okay. Laps. Yeah. You should yeah. still have enough, because if it's an hour you and a half, that's you're cutting 90s. out the first that's five minutes. That's 90 minutes. Yeah, but yeah, first thing you're cutting like off the first know, five minutes off. anyway. Everybody across the start. You did. Off you off you did. Back so, starts. Caution yeah. you okay. And then you put Von Senior back. Well, first couple minutes. What two laps ago anyway. was. It didn't make any sense. Yeah. You gave Hirschman the chance to start it up. He didn't. And then now you still go back two laps. You don't do that in the door. Yeah. 50 seconds. What was the th what was the reaction in the uh, standings? Uh, nobody knows that. Well, yeah, but if you, I mean, you could tell. I mean, they, they put him back. I mean, if anyone that follows that race team. Well, I understand. I was over in the driver's seat. Oh, so I mean, okay. 30 you know, seconds. Uh, which call? 
pit stand, so... All right, a lot of pressure on him right now. When, when am I doing that? Once we come back, then you're going to go in there. Okay. We're going to start with third. Yeah. Second, first. All. Yep. I and then I can go up. right into... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Race day next? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I got it all... You're sure? Up. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure it is. I'm counting on you. I was already back there. <laughs> Your car, your choice, the Auto Body Association of Connecticut. Welcome back, everyone. Gary Danko here in our Waterbury studio at WATR 1320 AM, right alongside Rocket Rick Rotundo from r, r Fabrication. He is also the crew chief on the SK Modified that Eric Burke competes with over at the Stafford Motor Speedway. They picked up a second this past Friday night. Uh, in the SK division. Good strong run for Eric and that race team. And uh, earlier tonight we heard uh, from Steve Massey who picked up a victory on the Volante Modified Racing Series. We just heard before National News Monty Dutton uh, talking about uh, things uh, on the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. We did want to touch base with him in regards to some stuff with uh, the NASCAR Nationwide Series and Camping World Truck Series. Uh, we'll, on our next uh, visit with uh, Monty, we'll make sure we start out uh, with the Nationwide Series and the Truck Series, Rick. And uh, Todd Zegany is scheduled uh, to join us uh, in just a couple of minutes. We'll check in with Todd and see how things are going for him in the Valente Modified Racing Series. We'll see if uh, they did get that open practice in today at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway uh, for the NASCAR Wheeling Modified Tour. Todd was uh, scheduled to practice Rob Fuller's car, which he will compete uh, in uh, a couple of races uh, uh, in the Rob Fuller owned uh, race car at uh, New Hampshire and uh, Ricky and I talked about it a little bit earlier. Todd always runs very very strong uh, at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Uh, for that matter Ricky he can he's strong everywhere he goes. Yeah he, good driver, he's talent. He, he's one of the natural drivers that just got in the car and he was was able to go fast with the car. Didn't It took him a while to be able to relate how the car was and things like that, but once he started to be able to communicate and stuff like that, was doing very well, won the Tour Championship and everything else, so he's definitely a driver. And the NASCAR Wheel Modified Tour uh, was at Stafford Motor Speedway uh, this past Friday night after a couple of rainouts. Uh, they finally were able to get the third race in of the season for the NASCAR Wheel Modified Tour. Uh, Bobby Santos, who's already picked up a victory in 2014, he would come home third. Here's uh, what he had to say about his uh, third place finish. Yeah, the, you guys gave me a great car. Uh, the first part of the race, you know, I knew they were a little better at the beginning, so I was just saving something for a last ditch effort. Uh, I wish that last yellow wouldn't come out because I think we had a shot at Doug there, but good thing Sally Tineo, uh, this whole team, they do an awesome job. Um, just, I'm happy with another good finish. Justin Bonsignor, he would come home in uh, second uh, with his. Uh, Number 51 car, of course, uh, he was uh, a winner already in 2014, and here's how he described uh, his evening coming home in second. We got robbed. Uh, we were second, or we were third, right before that last yellow for two laps, and they put us back to fourth, and that was just enough to uh, slow us down on that last restart, but uh, hats off to my crew chief, Billy Michael. Hell of a call to come in with uh, 20 to go to put rears on, and uh, you know, sometimes you just need things to fall your way, get advanced people, a couple people washed up in front of us, and uh, we were in position, but uh, I feel like we got robbed. And when it was all said and done, coming home for the victory in the Mike Smirglio own, Phil Moran prepared number two car, Doug Colby. Here's what he had to say about the win. Well, I know all you people in the stands thought I used my stuff up early, and uh, I'm sure you heard me left it at the start finish line for as long as I could because I knew it was going to happen. I knew a caution was going to come out, and... Uh, I just tried to save what I could, and, and I knew that Bobby and a couple guys behind us also didn't pit, but then I saw the 51 there, and, and he pitted with tires, so um, I'm just really happy. This car, you know, has been awesome every time we've taken out. Um, Daytona, New Smyrna, Thompson, Sizzler, here, uh, we're really clicking, and I, I want to thank this new team, you know, I mean, it's it's awesome to be with these guys. Uh, some of my guys came over with me from the 52, it was a, a move that it was difficult for me to make, but I, I'm happy with this two car, and I want to thank Doug, Le uh, Doug Dunleavy and his uh, truck and trailer repair business for supporting us. Also, Hex Performance, new sponsor, first time on the car in Victory Lane. So, I uh, can't beat that. And uh, Mike Spurglio, Phil Moran, and, and all these crew guys, all these fans, all my friends and family who are here. Uh, it's awesome to win here at Stafford. What a great place. And I want to thank TSI Harley-Davidson for sponsoring this race year in and year out. Um, 
Napa for coming on board here on Stafford. It's a, it's a big deal for all of us and, uh, of course, all the fans for being here tonight. And more on the NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour. Uh, we'll get you up to speed. Here's Joe Koss in race day now. Sir, the event was rained out two weeks in a row. The NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour returned to action on Friday night for the TSI Harley-Davidson 125. Three weeks prior to the event, Bobby Santos had won the chorus light pole, and he led the field down to the green flag. With Bobby Santos and Doug Kobe on the front row, the TSI Harley-Davidson went under the green flag on Friday night. The field raced off into turn number one, while the two race leaders, Santos and Doug Kobe, would duel wheel to wheel over the first couple of circuits. Santos would end up leading the first six laps before a quick move to the inside of turn number three put Doug Kobe out in front. Very quickly, it was apparent that the event would end up having a long green flag run. And one of the first drivers to recognize that was Woody Pitcat. He was turning some of the most consistent lap times, and here he goes by Patrick Emerling. A few moments later, he begins to gun down the drivers in the top five, and among them, Donnie Olea. Leah had a good run going for a while before contact with the lap automobile. Ken Hagee caused the first caution on lap 104. Hagee, not happy about it. Contact between the two in turns one and two. It brought everybody down the pit lane late in the going with only 14 cars on the lead lap. Everyone from seventh on back came in for service, many of them taking two tires, including Rowan Pennick. On the next restart, outside proof, turn number two. Woody Pitt got out of shape. Tommy Barrett goes three wide into the corner. Not enough room for that. He'll spin and collects Jamie Tomano. It would end the night for both drivers. On the next restart, Doug Kobe lining up alongside Ronnie Silk. Look a little further back. Emerling goes out of line, but it opens up the room for the 51 of Justin Bonsignor to pick up a spot. Bonsignor on two fresh tires goes by Woody Pickett on the high groove here to pick up another position. Turn number three, Bonsignor continuing to charge forward, picks up third over Ronnie Silk behind him. Matt Hirschman goes around, but it's a late yellow flag. The leader's already on the back straightaway before the caution flag comes out. NASCAR elected to restart Justin Bonsignor in the fourth position, even though he had bypassed Ronnie Silk. It ended up being a point of controversy. Final restart of the night, green-white checker, Kobe squaring off against Bobby Santos. Kobe bypassing him into turn number two, and behind them, Bonsignor gets third. Final circuit around, Bonsignor dropping to the bottom and challenging with Bobby Santos, but Doug Kobe hangs on for the race win, his first points win of the season, and sixth career victory at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Justin Bonsignor across in second with Bobby Santos, Rowan Pennick, and Woody Pitcap rounding out the top ten. Timmy Salamito, who has had a great season so far, will finish 13th. Donnie Leah, after his struggles, ended up 15th. Keith Rocco went out on lap 81 with an engine problem. For Doug Kobe and his team, it's a good thing that the next race on tour is at the Waterford Speed Bowl coming up on June 21st. He won the event in 2012 and was a runner-up there last season behind Ryan Priest. I'm Joe Koss, and thank you for tuning in to this edition of Race Day Next. So once again, congratulations, Ricky, uh, in order to uh, Doug Kobe, uh, Phil Moran, Mike Smurglio, and the whole uh, number two team. Uh, job well done. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we've said it before, Mike Smurglio, great car owner, Phil Moran, great crew chief, and they're paired up with Doug Kobe, and Doug's just doing what he does. He's just driving, and he's up front. It, it's, it's amazing how just swapping drivers like that and the kick gets in the car, he's just fast. Yeah, no, really fast. And uh, uh, coming up in just a minute or two, uh, Todd Zegedy, uh, who actually used to race uh, that number two car. Uh, of course, uh, they parted ways after the 2013 season. But uh, Todd doing very well, uh, driving on the Valente Modified Racing Series in the uh, Kevin Stewart uh, Motorsports, number 85 entry. And, of course, uh, Billy Bear Calicio, we mentioned it earlier, he is the crew chief uh, on that car. Uh, five races in. Uh, we're going to talk uh, to him about the, how his season is going so far, and uh, we'll uh, take it from there. But, uh, you know, Todd, certainly a talented driver. We've seen him get the job done um, <coughs> on the NASCAR Winter Modified Tour in the past, but now uh, for 2014 on the Volante Modified Racing Series. Our next guest, uh, he is all set and ready to go, uh, Todd Zegedy. Todd, how are you tonight? Oh, I'm loud. 
Okay, we'll start the conversation there. How was the weather there, and did you get that open practice in for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour? Yeah, weather was awesome. Sunny all day. Uh, wasn't too hot. You know, got up there probably 80 somewhere. Um, you know, we had a little bit of a cast here and there, but um, perfect timing. As I think as we left, uh, got down the road a little bit, started raining. Uh, I've been hitting on off rain the whole ride home now, so it's per perfect day, I guess to say. Okay, um, while we're talking about the NASCAR Wheel Modified Tour, we'll continue on that uh, with that open practice today. You're going to drive Rob Fuller Motorsports in, in, in a couple of races. Uh, how did that all come about? And uh, take us from there. Well, basically, um, you know, I knew, uh, you know, Rob, you know, he's doing the new LFR chassis. And, you know, with him driving, um, Basically, if he goes out there and he, you know, he tries to promote these cars, and, and you know, if he goes out there and he crashes somebody by mistake, a potential fire, you know, um, he doesn't want to be the guy to do that by accident. You know, he, he wants to be the guy to turn the wrench and tell, uh, promoting the car. And I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. You know, I, I kind of kept touch with them and told them a few times. I said, listen, when you want to put me in this race car, you let me know. And, um, you know, he gave me a call, and uh, we went... Um, you know, went tested it. That's that's basically how it went. You know, um, I I was available. Um, I made myself available to him, and um, I, I I really love doing RC work. I mean, uh, we did it with the CD car back in those two and those three, and had a lot of success. But I'm really looking forward to this. I mean, I, I think it's great. We have a great sponsor, 1540 early camp discussion. Um, so I I. I Everything's there, all the pieces are there. We just have to make them work. And uh, we had a phenomenal test of How many cars, uh, Todd, were on hand for the open practice today at New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the, the Wheel of Modified Tour? Uh, we had Silk Dolby, we had Pretty Kit Kat, uh, we had the girl Mar Marissa, um, we had uh, Ryan Free, we had uh, Ronnie Silk, we had uh, Tommy Barrett. And who else? Uh, said Brian McDonald. Those are a handful of guys there. Uh, good quality cars. So we would have a great day to gauge uh, what kind of car we had. Track edition was phenomenal. The track is very fast today. So, which is kind of rare. A lot of times you go to Loudon and, you know, for the first morning, you know, until about two, the track really doesn't start getting grip and getting good. And today it's fast right off the bat. So, we got a lot of value track time today. And uh, Todd, this is uh, Ricky. I, w I just want to touch on the chassis, the LFR chassis. Now, that's the Rob Fuller's building those cars. Yes, Rob Fuller, uh, Steve Levitt, are 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 involved in designing and building the race cars. Um, very well made car. Um, a lot of neat things I mentioned that I think is going to. You know, a lot of unknowns, obviously, Brett, because there's going to be a lot of things for the computer friends. You're going to be able to make great adjustments on pit stops. Um, you know, quick uh, adjustments. So, changing tires, you can make a play bar jump. So, that fast. And, um, you know, I think a lot of it was in came from late model stuff. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, you can talk to Robbie more about that. But um, <laughs> inside the driver cockpit, it's got a little bit bigger foot box. One of the biggest things I really, absolutely love, every modified you get into, um, especially with the LaJoyce. Now, I love the LaJoyce, don't get me wrong, but you have no elbow, right side elbow room. You know, when you've got a corrected car, your elbow will be smashed in the sand because you have uh, tor the torque arm that run up the middle of the car, which you know, that he yeah. um, has a uh, third leg stick on, I guess. And it's, you know, you can run all the tin work bumpers. And you got all kinds of elbow room. It's absolute uh, plastic guard. Um, so I was able to get the seat exactly where I wanted, gear room where I wanted, and um, the pedals where I wanted. That, that makes a big difference. For me, anyway. You know, some drivers get a car, whatever, they don't care. But I think, in the end, if you're comfortable and you're, you're not disturbed about anything in that cockpit, um, that's always a plus. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that. It's just. It doesn't make you go faster. It just takes one less thing out of your head while you're driving, where you're not worried, you're not concerned, you're not thinking about nothing else. 
And it's just one of them things, it's, it's one of them little things that just vanishes from your head. Yeah, and um, I've always been big and good, making sure I'm comfortable now, but you know, I'm not like, going to accuse of being too anal about it, but you know, um, I, I just think it's important. And, um, you know, especially at the end of a race, maybe you're tired or you're sweat, it's hot, that's where it's, it's going to make a big difference. And Rob uh, builds a beautiful race car, um, a lot of these, you know, quality parts of these cars, uh, a lot of attention to detail, so, um, I, you know, I, I, I think I think we're going to see a lot of success out of this car. Um, you know, I'm sure there's going to be the wrong things, um, and we're going to have to great too, but got to get the car out there, we got to throw in. Yeah, it's just one of the things, like, I remember also when you were, you know, testing with the CD cars back in, you know, the early 2000s and everything else, and, you know, we talked about it earlier that, you know, Rob and Justin on the car and then you driving the car, I said that, you know, that that's that's a team that really should work together. We're having him turn the wrenches and then you driving the car, I think that's going to be something that's going to work very well for these new chassis that he's trying to get out there. It's funny that you say that because Rob and I were talking about that, you know, I... There might be some things I might not be able to explain too well, and Rob will be able to kind of help me along with that by seeing that car out there, being a driver, knowing, you know, what that, you know, knowing what change is going to make. I mean, he was very thorough on the changes he made. He told me exactly what it should do. And that's the other thing about this car. Uh, stagger changes, made a, a difference in how the car handles. Um, it's all the you know, uh, track bars, play bar uh, changes, all of these great um, or noticeable changes. And that's really important. That's, that tells you have a great balance, great car. You have a great balance, great car. Any little change you make is going to notice it. And I'm um, uh, very, very, very happy with it. I mean, I, I really believe we're going to have a lot of success for Yeah, and I, I said a little bit earlier on the show that drivers that drove the cars make better guys at turning wrenches because you know when the driver's explaining something to you or you can see it when it's out there you know exactly what the driver's saying and meaning when he's out there and it makes it so much better to try to calculate how you're going to fix the car right and Rob is um, Rob's a very motivated guy uh, you know I'm, I'm, very, I'm pretty easy going anyway but I get along with pretty much anybody but um Right, but I was just very easy to talk, very easy to talk to. You know, I looked like Phil. You know, Phil and I had a, a phenomenal relationship, uh, Phil Moran. And, um, you know, he reminds me of him. I mean, we just, you know, the difference is that Phil didn't try uh, what Fuller did. You know, is that going to be better? I don't know. I mean, time will tell. Um, but I feel very comfortable with Rob, like I felt comfortable with Phil. So <clears throat> I think that combination is going to be great. We just got to make sure we keep the right people in the right places, everybody, once you get it organizing, you very organized at the race shop, you organize in a school box, kick cart, you know, that's a lot. So, um, and you're very good with taking so, so, you know, if nothing at all, we're going to have a great, we're going to have a great notebook, we're going to have something to go on. Todd, what did you learn today in this open practice at New Hampshire? Uh, just, you know, adjustments on the race cart. So we tried uh, shock, spring adjustments, we tried play bar adjustments, dagger adjustments, uh, wedge adjustments, uh, pan art bar adjustments. You know, we made all little minor adjustments, and I, I was able to feel all the adjustments. Uh, not to mention, you know, getting comfortable with the car. I, I spent time <clears throat> at the shop uh, getting like, comfortable, <clears throat> and so I didn't have to focus on any of that. So that was, that was taken out of the equation. Sometimes you go, you practice in a new car, and you got something that bothers you, whether it's pedals or where the steering wheel is at, um, you know, we just not comfortable on the seat. And I was perfectly comfortable, so that that was a big uh, part for me. And, um, you know, uh, like I said, the track is fast, so we, we were able to try and see all the combination. Okay. Now uh, let's talk about the Volante Modified Racing Series. Of course, you're running uh, full-time in that series, running uh, uh, Kevin Stewart Motorsports number 85, Billy Bear Caliccio, your crew chief. Let's talk about uh, your first five races in 2014 on the Volante Modified Racing Series, Todd. First of all, Kevin Stewart, the whole team are phenomenal. There is another guy who's great to work with. I mean, I, you know, I communicate well with him, too. And uh, they 
anything I need in that race car to give me. You know, the first couple of races, you know, we had uh, great finishes, uh, but we were a little off. We made some changes, and, um, you know, these last few races were phenomenal. You know, Thompson, awesome shot at winning Thompson. You know, could have, would have, should have. That's the way racing goes until we, uh, we had a late race caution. Um, come to find out, we started having a right rear go down on us, and when we came in, it took a dagger, and really, the dagger was really low because on the last restart, I, my car wasn't, didn't respond as well. It was close like the center. I had to fall too much, and that allowed Derek to get me. If, if we, we weren't losing our hair in our right rear, I would have been gone. And um, uh, unbelievable race start at Tom Dusty Hill. So well, it's unreal. Um, you know, didn't get the finish we deserved, but that's okay. Um, still leading the points. And then we go to Seacom, track that. A track that, I can't tell you I like it, but I don't hate it either. But it's one of these tracks where I want to win it. Just like I want to win at a rear end field. You know, tracks that I've struggled on the past. I, I never felt I was a great short track racer. So I'm really focused on trying to get better on these short tracks where you're corner half bottle. Great night at um at uh Peacock and uh toward the end there twenty to go I just gonna roll on the outside. I, I really believe I could have rolled right up in the second. I don't know if I have anything for Matthew. Never with the rounds, so I don't know how it was. But I do know there were a whole line of cars on the bottom and I rolled all the way up to the spot. Uh Lowen and I got down a little bit, shoved the back to six, then the caution came out. <clears throat> Five laps to go. Second place guy uh, misses the shift. We all get jumped up. Uh, uh, you know, we all get crossed up and banged up, and I got I lost double position. Got get up back by two guys that just didn't have enough time to get back up there and finish six. So I'm really happy because we're knocking on the door with it. And um, like I said, Kevin Stewart and the team they're they're really working well together, and they're giving me a great race car. So. Um, it's just a matter of time. I, I really believe once we get to the next rhythm, I'm going to win a bunch of races. And uh, Bear Calicio, he's the crew chief. So if, if you want to throw him under the bus or talk bad about him at all, it's okay. <laughs> Only on this radio show. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's no problem. Bear loves it. And there's, there's a lot of hot talking at these sometimes, but we have a good time with it. And, um, you know, uh, I think you need to have an open mind and race. Um, there's some good fun up and down. You gotta express your feelings with everything. Um, tell it what you like and don't like, and um, get over anything that happens on the racetrack or anywhere else. Go race. And um, you know, I'm lucky. I'm fortunate. I, I, I'm fortunate in my career that I've been able to drive for a lot of great teams and a lot, and have a lot of great coaching. Um, and uh, you know, and not a lot of people can say that. So I, you know, I gotta make the best of it. And, and, Ultimately, we need to start looking at races, and uh, we will. We just, some of the luck at the end of these races haven't really gone our way, and eventually it will, and we're going to wrap up play. A couple more minutes uh, with uh, Todd Zegley, who runs on the Valente Modified Racing Series. He runs the number 85 car. Uh, Todd, of course, uh, you were busy testing today uh, up in New Hampshire Motor Speedway, as we talked about, uh, but uh, there was breaking news today that uh, Scott Tapley, is out as a series director on the Volante Modified Racing Series. Your thoughts? You know, I, I just thought, you know, I, I met the guy from the side. Um, I thought he did a, 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 a great job talking to us, um, you know, uh, when he did the driver's meeting. Um, I never had a problem with him, so I, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened. Why, why I don't know if he's let go or quit. I don't know. Um, it's never a good thing when you have things like that happen, but I, hopefully whatever change that the Valente uh, Modified Great Series has made is going to be for the better. Um, it's not a bad series. I think it's a great series. Uh, we have some great races. You know, Seacock was a little rammy and uh, guys are banging. We got a few fights, a couple of them in the pit, you know, but um, you know what? You got to support the fellow. A lot of tough stops, so, though. Um, a lot of guys get angry out there with each other, and um, you're going to have that. So, you know, I had nothing against the guy. I thought he was a great guy, but, um, you know, sometimes change is good. Just like, you know, with Steve uh, last year, you know, uh, big change in the name with my life and, uh, with racing. And everything is 
Todd, thanks for spending some time with us on this edition of Speedway Larry Fort Radio. Uh, we hadn't talked in a while, and uh, once again, it's great to see uh, that uh, you're going to do uh, some uh, racing with uh, Rob Fuller. Uh, some races on the NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour. Of course, running full-time on the Volante Modified Racing Series. Uh, so far, so good there, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, catching up with you soon. Absolutely. Todd Zegney joining us tonight on this edition of Speedway Laramie Port Radio. This show is also being brought to you by the Grotto Restaurant. Closed Sunday and Monday, serving fine Italian food, whether it's eat-in or take-out. Uh, make sure you stop uh, at the Grotto Restaurant. They're located right here in Waterbury, Connecticut. Speedway Laramie Port Radio is presented to you by Shaler Acura of Manchester, Connecticut. Also being brought to you by Embroidery Works, J.M. Montesano Auto Body, Jim's Lawn Care Service, Grotto Restaurant. And your car, your choice, the Auto Body Association of Connecticut. For Rotundo, Graves, Baggett, and Ormsby, I'm Gary Danko. We'll look forward to talking to you next Monday night right here on WATR 1320 AM. Good night. ...has been a GMD production. Don't forget to listen to Gary next Monday night for more auto racing news on the Speedway Live Report. And in case you didn't...